Welcome back to our series on rose and perfumery. So in this series, we've been taking a deep dive into rose and in the last few videos, we've been taking a look at the specific aroma chemicals which are found naturally inside of rose. In this video, we're gonna start blending those aroma chemicals together for the first time in order to create some basic rose accords. So if you're interested in creating your own rose accord, stick around and watch the rest of this video. Okay, so in the last videos, we've looked at quite a lot of raw materials. And now when it comes to making our first basic rose accord, I didn't want to get really confused by all of those raw materials. Essentially, I didn't want to just put them all together in one big blend and then not have a clue what's going on. So what I thought we would do to begin with in terms of baking our rose accord is to start off with the most simple possible rose accord. So I was looking online and I found a post on the Base Notes forum, which essentially said that you could make a pretty good core kind of rose accord just by using geranial, citronellol and PEA or phenylethyl alcohol. And I thought that sounds pretty reasonable because the citronellol and the geranial are two of the biggest components in rose by percentage. And even though that the rose oil doesn't seem to have much PEA, I've heard that the absolute of rose actually does contain a lot of PEA and it's just the way that the essential oil is extracted that causes the PEA to be lost. So apparently for a more natural smelling rose or something that actually smells like a rose, you do still need to have that PEA. And that does kind of make sense since that had quite a diffusive petal-like smell. So that's exactly what I used for my first blend. I took geranial and citronellol roughly at a similar relative proportion as they're found in the real essential oil. And I also added a lot of PEA to fill it out. So when I smell this blend, the first thing that really jumps out of me is how much it actually does remind me of rose. So I wasn't expecting the first kind of guess of just those three things to necessarily smell that much like rose, especially when the citronella, which is a high concentration, just reminds me a lot in general of something more close to say lemongrass or citronella. But when I smell this, it really does remind me a bit of rose. And it definitely smells more than the sum of its parts, as in it's not just that it smells of those three things together. It really does kind of create or start to create a new kind of perceptual smell beyond what you would imagine um, in isolation that those three things would smell like together. So I think that's really cool. And what I think that shows is it really is an accord. It's not just simply a mixture or some combination of three things that doesn't have an effect beyond that. So the one thing I would say about this is that the citronella maybe is a little bit strong for my liking, as in I do get a bit of a herbaceous or a little bit of a sharpness from the citronella coming through. Um, at least more so than I would like to have in the rose. And I do think that later on, I will try to go and tone that down a bit to make the rose a bit more to my liking. But for now, in the next set of blends, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go and keep this formula because then I've got a reference point and I'm just gonna go through a load of key uh, raw materials that we've already looked at before. And I just wanna add those on their own and I wanna see what effect each one has on the blend so I can get an idea but what the different things are actually doing to that core rose skeleton. And the other thing I will note about this quickly before we move on is that I did monitor this over the week and I noticed that it doesn't last as long as the actual rose. So I assume it's some of those kind of mid to base note components, maybe things like the Damascones, the Ionones, and maybe some of the other phenyl constituents that are causing the actual smell of the rose to last longer on the scent strip. Anyway, next what I've done is I've gone and made seven new blends where I've taken that same formula from before, but added one different component each time. So I've taken this as a mixture of components across some of the last videos and some of those which I thought were probably the most important ones. So I started off with Neryl, then I also did Rose Oxide, I did Farnesol, I did one of the aldehydes, I did some of the phenyl constituents, and then finally I did one with Damascones and one with Ionones. So let's start off with the one with Neryl. Okay, so this one with Neryl, I have to say, I do think the Neryl smells quite strongly in this one. In general with these, I did go a little bit over what I thought to make sure I did notice the effect of the extra ingredient. But in this case, I do think that um, the Neryl is definitely dosed too strongly. It does really overpower the rest of the Accord and make the whole thing smell like Neryl. So it does <laughs> make the Accord, I think, smell maybe a bit less like Rose actually, and it gives it that more kind of just slightly citrus, a bit woody, um, well, smell that Neryl does have on its own. Though that said, I can imagine that the Neryl uh, might help at a much lower concentration, 
Potentially that's something we'll experiment with in one of the next iterations. So next we've got the rose oxide. Now, I've got to say, this one is pretty incredible. I wasn't prepared for how much um, this is actually going to make it smell like rose, but this one really, really does uh, make it smell, I think, a lot more like rose. And it just adds this kind of diffusive pink pinkness, like a kind of rose petal smell to it. I can't quite describe it, but I remember reading in those books and it said one of the uh, key or most important aroma chemicals in the smell of rose was actually the rose oxide. And I guess it's not too surprising given that it was called rose oxide after all. But yeah, I think this one is really clearly quite important in the rows. And I imagine that the concentration I guessed for this is quite good because it does seem to blend really seamlessly into the rows. It just helps make the smell a lot more like a natural kind of rose like you'd expect it to smell. Um, and I don't think it smells strongly of the rose oxide or anything like that. It just blends seamlessly into the court. So I was quite happy with this iteration. Next we have the Farnesol, or that sesquiterpene that we learned about in the terpenes video. So this one actually was really, really interesting because when I smelled Farnesol in the past, I never really knew what to do with it. And when I smelled this, I thought the effect that it had on the rose accord was really quite remarkable. So as soon as I dipped this in, I can instantly, without even having to go up close to it, I got this whiff of something that smelled a bit like peach iced tea. And for me, when I smell this, it smells as like I've really taken the rose in a peach direction, which again, I think is really surprising given that I didn't think the Farnesol on its own particularly smelled like peaches. But yeah, it almost makes me think of if I'd have put some aldehyde C14 or something like that into the blend, which I think is really cool. Now, this is a side of the rose that I'd really like to explore a bit more because it does make it smell a bit less like a traditional rose and more of this kind of fantasy, uh, peachy, fruity kind of thing that's based on rose. Um, but I quite like that, and I would like to explore that a bit more. When we go to make the rose accord, or at least one I come up with, I'm probably not going to go for something too realistic, because we've already got those rose bases, and I don't think we're going to get anywhere near to those in terms of doing a good job. So when I actually go to develop my rose accord, I want to take it in my own personal direction and come up with something a bit new, a bit interesting. Um, so I think that the Farnesol actually could be a good direction to go in. And the other interesting thing about this was the Farnesol really makes it last longer on the scent strip, um, it really extends out the life of the Accord. So this is also something that seems to be great for the longevity. Okay, so moving on, the next thing I wanted to look at was the aldehydes. And I wanted to stick to just one aldehyde to keep things simple. So the one I chose was aldehyde C9 because that is the one that I'm pretty sure is actually found inside of rose oil. Now, because the aldehyde is quite strong, I decided to try to keep a fairly low concentration. So I did shift down to my 1% dilution in order to make this one up. So I'm gonna go and smell it. And as soon as I smell this, I do think that actually I probably should have put the aldehyde in a bit weaker because it still is pretty damn strong. So when I smell this, it does still have some kind of a rose aspect to it, but honestly I do think that the aldehyde dominates and I can smell that orange peel smell coming through just a little bit and also that kind of soapy clean smell that aldehydes seem to give. Now I do think that there is a little bit of um, a kind of an accord effect or a blending effect going on. And there is kind of something interesting about the combination, as in I can still smell the rose just underneath the aldehyde, and that combination together does smell quite interesting. So I do think that this aldehyde probably should go in the rose accord, because I do think it adds this interesting element of sparkle to it, but I need to try it, I think, at a lower level. So next, we've got one with some phenol constituents, and what I added here was phenylethyl acetate and the phenyl acetaldehyde, just very small amounts. So this one, immediately I've got that kind of hyacinth-like smell coming through. And I don't think it necessarily alters the accord that much, but it just adds that extra element, uh, maybe a bit of that greenery around the rose. And I don't think it's a bad thing, but I also, I'm not too sure that it's necessarily the direction I want to go in with the rose accord that I want to make. I think I want it to be less green, a bit more fruity. That's just kind of the initial thoughts that I've been having for now. Um, but I can see a place for these in a rose accord. 
Again, maybe they're a bit too much of a high level because they're still quite noticeable, but it does seem that they kind of fit in. So next we've got the Damascones, and I chose just to keep things simple, just use Beta Damascone because that's the one that's found in the highest concentration in rows out of the ones that I have. Now this one is pretty interesting because I think that the Beta Damascone adds this kind of second layer to the rows and it just makes it a lot more full. It kind of adds this background kind of uh, enveloping layer to the rose and it's maybe a little bit fruity and it also kind of contributes to the rose scent. It's reminiscent a little bit of that apple smell that I got from it, but it definitely adds a lot more depth to the rose. Now in this one, I've actually gone and put it slightly over what would be allowed in the IFRA limits, but I wanted to make sure I could definitely smell the effect of the Damascon. So I think I think that this definitely is, I can see why it's so important in the rose because it, it really does bring it closer to the rose. I still think maybe the rose oxide um, is just a little bit more important, but nonetheless, I do think that that beta damascone definitely helps a long way with the rose becoming more realistic and more complex. So I think I probably will try to put a bit of that in the accord. I don't know yet if I'm gonna go and try adding some of the alpha or delta damascones as well. That's something we'll see. And I guess if I wanted to go for more of that kind of um, that fruity side of the rose, I could go and add some ethyl saffronate to take me up over those allowed IFRA limits. Again, I'm not sure yet, so we'll see in the next video when I go and do that. So finally, we've got the ionones, and I tried to do an equal mixture of alpha and beta ionone in order to just get a more balanced idea of how ionones in general affect the rose accord. I wasn't too worried about just sticking to one or the other. So, now with the ionones, uh, the one thing you do notice straight away is that kind of violet effect that it adds. And one thing they really do remind me of is the Rose Jivco, which is one of those rose bases we looked at in the first video. And it makes me think that the Rose Jivco must be a bit heavier on the ionones than the real rose or the permanent rose base. And I think this adds a lot more of a kind of candy-like, um, or more of a sweet, uh, fruity, um, kind of soft embracing side to the rose. Definitely makes it a bit less natural, but um, I do think it's quite nice. And I think I would definitely like to to keep this probably for the rose accord that I kind of make. Again, I don't know if I would put the concentration of them up or down. But anyway, overall, after looking at all these things, I really can appreciate a lot more which ones are important to the smell of the rose and the effects of them. Especially, I think this has revealed to me that the rose oxide and probably the Damascones and the Ionones after that are, I would say, the, the most important things here, but even at low concentrations, just having a touch of those really adds a lot to your rose accord. At the same time, I'm interested to know what would happen with those aldehydes at a bit of a lower concentration, and I'm still not too sure about the Neryl and things like that. I did really like that effect that the Farnesol has, so I think that's something that we're going to keep looking at in the next video. Okay, so before moving on to really trying to personalize my own rose accord to the way that I want it to be, I also wanted to look at some other, um, let's say, more official versions of the rose accord. So what I did was I was looking at my book called Introduction to Perfumery, and in that book there is a section on rose bases, and the book also gives three different skeleton formulas for rose bases. So what that means as a skeleton formula is this is a basic scaffold rose accord that you can try out and then I assume go to modify. So I didn't quite have all of the raw materials that were included in those skeleton formulas, so it's possible that they don't smell quite as intended, but I did have most of them. So I've got those three skeleton formulas made right here. So the first one of those skeleton formulas, um, to be honest, I don't actually like it that much. This one seems to really emphasize the kind of terpene or the herbaceous side of the rose. And it's got things like Neryl in there. But to me, I don't know what it is about it. There's something about the balance. It doesn't really actually smell particularly like rose anymore to me. I think the citronella, for whatever reason, really jumps out and it makes it smell more like a terpene soup, I would say, than an actual rose. Which, to be fair, is surprising because I would have thought something I found in the book would smell a bit closer to actual rose. I think some of the ones before, from those basic formulas we had, for example, that one with the rose oxide, smelled a lot more like rose than this. So, 
I found this quite interesting as a reference, but I, I didn't really know what else to think of it, just because I thought, well, I don't know, it's not that good. Anyway, next we have the second row skeleton formula, and this one was probably my favourite out of all of them. And this one in particular, they seem to really go heavy on the eugenol and be looking a bit more at the aldehydes. So this one is a lot more of a fantasy rose accord, and I really get a lot of sweetness through it, and that is because I think the general acetate that they've added, they've really bumped that up to quite a high level. And you also do smell the eugenol coming through quite strongly, and it also brings it much further towards a carnation smelling thing, so it doesn't really smell truly like a rose anymore, it seems to be more like a fantasy flower. But yeah, that said, I do quite like this version, um, even though it's probably not how I would want a final rose base to smell, I do think that they've made really interesting use of those elements, like adding a load of eugenol and geronyl acetate together. That's not something that I would have thought of, um, but I do think the effect is quite interesting. It is probably something that smells a bit more like maybe a home product or a candle, but I think I can definitely draw some inspiration for this in my rose accord that I make. In particular, I'm quite interested to try that high dose of geronyl acetate, that kind of sweet, fruity thing, because, again, I said I think I would quite like to make more of a fruity rose accord, and I think maybe with that Farnesol and um, pushing that side of it, maybe having a high dose of geronyl acetate, those together could be quite interesting, so that's what I'm thinking of doing. Anyway, finally, in the third skeleton formula, this one... Um, this one wasn't that uh, distinctive, I felt. Maybe it was the most realistic out of these three formulas for a rose. And in this one, I think it's really the fact that they've added that iron that adds a lot to the realism of the rose. It helps it a lot more. That said, I still don't think that this is particularly better than any of the other ones that we tried. But I do think... Out of all these three kind of formulas that they proposed in that book, this one seems the most reasonable uh, base to build on for a rose. And I'm not trying to slag off that book or anything, it's just in this case I made those formulas and I have to say uh, they're not my favourite. But yeah, so overall, while all of the blends that I've introduced in this video, I think you could safely say they're with varying levels of success. I think that this is a good foundation of knowledge from which to build on in order to make a more personalized rose accord, which is what I'm going to be doing in the next video. So all I can really take from this is firstly with that first experiment, I felt that having as much citronellol as there's meant to be, um, I actually think it does add this kind of sharp side to it, and if I'm going to give myself some liberty with the accord, I don't see why not bring that down a bit in order to make it a bit nicer, maybe a bit more well-rounded, kind of to bend it in the direction that I want. Then, out of the experiments that I tried, I think what I really learned from that is I'm really interested in experimenting with this Farnesol side of the rose. I also think that the rose oxide is really important, and I would like to have definitely a little bit of Damascone and Ionone inside of there as well. And I'm also interested in maybe playing around a little bit more with the aldehydes to see what kind of effects I can give the rose with those. Then finally, with those formulas that we found from the book, um, I guess I was surprised with those that they weren't quite as um, accurate as I expected they might be considering they were from a book. But that said, I also found they were quite interesting, and in particular, what I got from those um, was that second formula with the eugenol and the geronyl acetate. I was um, quite intrigued by that, and I think I would like to maybe take a page out of that book and try to implement those in the rose accord that I make as well, and see um, if essentially they're successful with the rest of the accord that I make. So next week I'm going to go and experiment with those, I'm going to come up with some more iterations, and this time I'm really going to try to make the rose accord my own, and then I'm going to document that journey, and I'm going to report back to you guys in the next video, and hopefully by that time I'll be able to present you with a final formula for my own personal rose accord. That's not to say it's a great rose accord or anything, but hopefully it'll be something um, that I think is kind of cool or interesting. So I'll see you next time, and thank you very much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content, because it really helps out the channel. And until then, have a great week. See you next time.